Jeff Bezos sued by Amazon pension shareholders and Elon Musk awaits his phone call. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. What do you think? What do you think? It's tea time, guys. It is tea time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, that smokiness. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and their companies and uh, what is going on over there with Project Kuiper and a lot of back and forth has been going on. And I did a video, I would say about maybe a month ago, maybe two. And I was talking about Jeff Bezos having to make a phone call to Elon. And Elon is just kind of sitting around waiting for that phone call. And the reason being is because Project Kuiper is just in the weeds. It's been like this for many years, and the reason being is they haven't got a single satellite into orbit. Many people don't know this, but Project Kuiper, their competitor, direct competitor to SpaceX's Starlink, is vaporware. It is non-existent. It does not exist. There's not even a single satellite, a prototype, in low Earth orbit. Nothing. Zero. So I was reading a bunch of articles and I wanted to kind of bring some of this to your attention because as of, I think, two days from now, three days from now, supposedly there's going to be a launch that's going to happen that's going to send up two, <laughs> two satellites into orbit for Bezos. Now, I'm going to get into that today, but before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks as of yet, go pick them up. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you get anything out of this video, if you enjoy it, even in the least, give it a thumbs up. That'll be very, very helpful. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink specific content, about 195 videos I've made so far, helpful how to tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel is all about the why. Go check out this playlist over here that I put together just for you. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, that's always appreciated. There's a little thank you button right down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's fine too. Just consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN, the nice folks over there at Pure VPN gave us a promo code, which is J Christina. If you use that promo code, you're gonna get 15% off the VPN, or maybe you just want a static IP address or do port forwarding. They can give that to you also for about a dollar or two a month or something. It's really, really, reasonable. Anyways, go check out Pure VPN. You can go to jcristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash VPN. So I'm going to read to you a couple of little short paragraphs from a few articles, give you my commentary. Most importantly is I want your thoughts on this topic. What do you think? Because as Starlink users, which the majority of you are, or you're looking into possibly buying Starlink, SpaceX Starlink may have a competitor with Jeff Bezos's Project Kuiper. But as of right now, it doesn't. So let's get into this. Now, RS Technica wrote this. They said shareholders of a pension fund that includes Amazon have sued the company, its founder, Jeff Bezos, and its board of directors for, quote, breaching their fiduciary duties as part of a contract to acquire launch services for the Project Kuiper mega constellation. The lawsuit is spicy from the standpoint of the space community because it highlights the tension between Musk and Bezos and the fact that Musk's company has consistently outperformed Blue Origin in nearly all manners of spaceflight activities. This is a fact. If you didn't know this, Jeff Bezos owns Blue Origin, which is one of the companies that he has contracted to get his satellites into space and not even his own company can actually get this to happen. Anyways, we'll get into that in just a second. Amazon has readied a defense. In not considering SpaceX, it chose not to fund its largest competitor in the space-based internet business. That sounds all great as a defense, but 
Number one, I think that it's bullshit. And the reason being, I think, is bullshit is because Bezos should have or could have just simply called up Elon and said, listen, I need a ride share into orbit and I want to use your SpaceX Falcon 9s to get my prototypes Two, I only need to get two satellites into orbit. This single launch wouldn't have made Elon Musk a ton of money. So that's a bunch of BS. Like they're going to support the competitor by one launch. But number two, which is really important, is if they would have used Elon Musk Falcon 9 to get these prototypes into orbit, they would have immediately been able to have real world testing done actually real world beta testing on these satellites instead of just talking, talking, talking with nothing to talk about. Once again, there's not a single satellite in orbit as of today. That is a big problem. Looking at this with a wide angle lens, to me, it looks like Jeff Bezos sacrificing his shareholders interest over his hatred for a fellow billionaire. So this brings us to today. Bezos is still not budging. He will not pick up the phone to give Elon that call and say, hey man, listen, I need a ride. He just will not do it. He won't. So out of the three contracted space companies, number one, ULA, as well as Arian Space, and then finally Blue Origin, which is actually his company, out of all three of them, ULA, is supposedly going to use one of their Atlas V rockets to launch two prototype satellites on the 6th of this month into orbit for Jeff Bezos, Project Kuiper, to see if this even works. I find it very, very interesting that not even his own company, Blue Origin, can get a satellite into orbit. And just so you know, ULA, as well as Arian Space and his own company, Blue Origin, have never put a satellite into orbit. Never. Never. <laughs> so when this thing launches, I believe it's going out of Cape Canaveral right up the road from me. When it launches, this is going to be a first for them. Are they going to actually get it into orbit or will it fail? We really don't know. Weather permitting, supposedly, like I said, on the 6th, this rocket, this Atlas V, will launch with Jeff Bezos' two prototypes on board. Fingers crossed for them. Now, I was reading another article over on cord cutters, which I thought was also very interesting, and it kind of tells what Amazon is doing here or Project Kuiper is trying to do here. It says this, in October of 2022, Amazon announced the Project Kuiper would launch more than 3,000 satellites into low Earth orbit to offer this home internet service. Amazon has originally hoped to launch the first test satellites in early 2023, but the companies they plan to work with suffers delays. Yeah, all of them, ULA, Arian Space, his own company, Blue Origin delay, delay, and more delay. Now, it seems that Amazon has found a partner who will be able to launch these satellites this year. Yes, ULA. Amazon secured a deal with ULA, Arian Space, as well as Blue Origin to launch these satellites into space starting in early 2024. Amazon is facing a deadline as the FCC has given it until mid-2026 to have 1,600 satellites in space or face losing its FCC approval for the project. So they can literally lose the approval for this project altogether if they don't get those 1,600 satellites into orbit by 2026, mid 2026. Now, they also put in here what plans Jeff Bezos is going to offer. I just, I kind of don't want to read these two, but I also want to just so that you know. So number one, their standard plan is going to be this. It comes with an 11 inch square antenna and will offer 400 megabits down. They call this perfect for home use. Secondly, it has a pro version. It says it comes with an 11 by 30 inch, 11 by 30 inch, that's massive, pro antenna that offers speeds up to one gigabit per second. It says good for companies or large households. And then finally, it has a portable version, just like SpaceX does. Their Starlink portable or mobility, roaming. So their portable version, it says, comes with a seven inch antenna that offers speeds up to 100 megabits. So I kind of, I'm just, I cringe when I give you this information because like I said, this is pie in the sky stuff. They don't have a single satellite in orbit to date. So to come up with this information, it's so speculative. There's no way of them knowing that they're going to be able to produce these speeds. 
all right? I don't care the size of it and how big this is and how big that is and they have showed prototypes of it and all this stuff. What are they connecting to? Are they connecting to a satellite, maybe like on the other side of like a flat plane in a desert? So, I mean, what are they connecting to? What are they doing? It's just kind of stupid in my personal opinion. So anyways, I gave you the information just so you have it, so you know where they're going with it. Anyways, finalizing this article, it says, Bezos' goal is not only to compete, but also to undersell SpaceX Starlink. So the price tag would be under $100 per month. That's if the project ever came to fruition. Now, it does have a quote right from Amazon that kind of talks about this a little bit and how they're going to be able to not only provide the service, but undersell SpaceX Starlink. It says this, Amazon hasn't announced pricing details yet, but affordability is a key principle to Project Kuiper. Amazon has a long-standing commitment to low prices and lots of experience in building popular low-cost devices like the Echo Dot and the Fire TV Stick. We're applying a similar approach to Project Kuiper. We also know that customers' needs will vary quite a bit around the world, and our service offerings may vary from country to country with the right pricing and service for customers in each region. So remember, what this is this is very, very important that neither of the ULA, Arian Space, or once again, his own company, Blue Origin, has ever placed a satellite into orbit. So this will be the first coming out of Cape Canaveral, once again, right up the road from us. So if this happens, I think that'll be fantastic because at least then they can start testing these prototypes to see even if they work, even if they work. Once again, all of this is pie in the sky. They have these hopes and aspirations and dreams that he does, and he's willing to spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to be able to go directly against his competitor, which is Elon Musk, which he hates. He loathes. Hate, 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 hate. Double hate. Loathes entirely. Right? That's why he won't pick up the damn phone. That's why he's being sued and the company's being sued by these pension shareholders because they just will not just make the phone call and get this to become a reality, which is hurting them, I guess, in their pockets. So what say you? You know, my question, I guess, to you is, do you think that Jeff Bezos can pull this off? That's number one. Also, do you think that Jeff Bezos should have made that phone call to Elon Musk and said, listen, I need a lift into space, into low Earth orbit, and I just want you to take these two prototypes up there. He could have done this a year ago. Should he have? Also, will Bezos be able to put those 1,600 satellites into orbit before mid-2026, or will he end up losing this FCC approval? That deadline of 2026, do you think that he can meet that deadline? And finally, will this ULA Atlas V launch that's going to happen, will it be a success? Do you think that it will be maybe another delay, delay, and more delays that we've seen in the past? Or do you think it'll be just an outright failure? What do you think? Down below, I wanna hear from you. Let's have this discussion. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting. It was fun putting it together for you. If you have, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.